Hey yo, it's your boy Ike with another episode of a little show I like to call Create or Die. Now if you're new to the program and you're like, what is this? Create or Die? Well, if you don't know, you're probably in the wrong place. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, think about it. Where does Create or Die come from? Well, it's a uh, it's a callback to the old term skate or die, which you know I haven't been on a skateboard in a lot of years, but I uh, would imagine some people out there still hold strong to that mantra. And it's essentially saying that if you can't do the thing that you love, you might as well kill me because I'm not gonna be truly living. And for me and my listeners and for you personally, if you're here, you got to create. It's just inside of you. It's eating you up. I know it is. So join me right now as we jump into another exciting episode, episode 62 of this program. So stay right here. right here we are we're back into it it's the season of the the holidays we're deep into Hanukkah and for my Christmas peeps that's that's coming right up we're talking like two weeks away I mean I've got one more full week of work and then maybe one day the following week and I'm I'm out you know took, took a little extra PTO time to get ready for for what's gonna be craziness, right? We gotta wrap them presents, you gotta maybe visit uh, people, you gotta spread the love, spread the joy, that's all happening. And in addition to that, here we are, end of 2023. Can you believe it? Like, I'm literally just getting comfortable with the fact that it's not 2019 anymore. And here we are knocking on the door of 2024. So get ready, be thinking about, you know, what did I accomplish this year? What can I go and do better for the following year? You know, I'm sure we'll have an episode here in the next week or two that's gonna be all about them New Year's resolutions, them creative resolutions. You know, how are you gonna create more? How are you gonna do all the things, right? But this time around, on this episode, you know, every once in a while, well, let's be honest, it's a, it's on the daily. I'm doom scrolling on the TikTok when there's nothing else I can do because I'm otherwise, uh, you know, predisposed. Uh, you know, doom scrolling on the TikToks, but what comes out of that are some really interesting, uh, you know, knowledge nugs, if you will, right? And this time, I'm just I'm just gonna share one, okay? I know on some episodes, I'm like, here's this one, here's that, and we're gonna string it all together into some kind of coherentness, okay? But this time, we're gonna focus on one. And it was interesting, when I first heard this, I was like, yeah, speak, you know, preach, brother, because I totally get that, you know? But then, when I went reading on the comments of, of what this uh, gentleman had to say, you know, it was about 50-50, maybe even more, saying, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. So let's go ahead and dive into this and let's see what, uh, what side of the, the page you fall on, what side of the coin, you know, however you want to slice and dice that. It's up to you. So without further ado, now I apologize, I don't know this gentleman's name. Uh, if if y'all know, if you recognize his voice or you've seen this clip before, please uh, let me know. It was, you know, another TikTok channel that like compiles inspirational stuff and put it on there and, and didn't say anything in the description or the comments about who this guy is. I've seen him before, but uh, my mind is, is blank. So the channel I pulled it from is at minted reality okay so let's hear what uh what, he, what this guy's got to say when you're overthinking 
you're pretending you're trying to decide what to do. Yeah. You're not. You're actually trying to decide how to eliminate the consequences or the risk. So the overthinking is about trying to control outcomes rather than to choose action. The truth is you don't have control over outcomes. And, and so I think one of the clicks or one of the switches that changes you from moving into overthinking is, um, do I know what to do? Just do it, hmm. even if you don't know the outcome. So essentially that's about overthinking. And most of the comments were, you know, most of the negative comments were like, you don't know what you're talking about. You got to think through problems. It's important to have like a pros and cons list. And this is just straight up garbage. Okay. Well, you gotta, you gotta listen to what he said. He, he didn't say it's important, you know, not to think about a problem. Instead, he says overthinking. Now, the word over is, you know, a fancy term. I, you know, I forget the term, <laughs> but essentially it's, uh, it's subjective, right? Your over might be different than my over, you know? Do you overperform at your job or underperform or just do the right amount of performance, right? Um, did I over design this or is it just the right amount of design? You know, same thing comes to thinking through. You know, did I over eat, under eat, or eat the right amount? Now, it's not saying that you can't eat, you know, so so the comments that are like, oh, you've got to think through, yeah, of course you do, of course you do, but you all, we all know, we all know when we've overdone something, you know, it's pretty obvious when the, the popcorn is smelling up the whole house and there's burn marks in the microwave, you've overcooked that bad boy, right? So you got to throw it out because, you know, it's going to it's going to be bad, right? Same thing with, with thinking about something. Now, this applies to design and art as well as just life in general. You know, have you been wanting to do something in your life? Take a chance. Uh, start a new podcast, a new YouTube channel. Have you wanted to build that thing, make it a reality that has been like eating you from the inside for months, for years, you know? Sure, you gotta think about it. You gotta be like, okay, if I'm saying yes to this new crazy thing, I'm probably saying no to some other things. You know, if it's about your employment, you're going from full-time, quote, you know, dependable, uh, steady employment, to risky, you know, freelance work full time, for example. You gotta think that through, right? But you gotta do the right amount of thinking. Eventually, you would have, you know, you've made those pros and cons lists and you've weighed them out. You can see that, uh, you know, there are definitely pros and, and cons, okay? Now I've just overdone that point. Right, <laughs> but uh, so so yeah. To suffice it, suffice it to say, it's subjective, and you know when you've overdone something. And then you know he talks about the point of you know what you're doing when you're overthinking, when you've done more thinking than it requires, and that's up to you. You decide what that is that you're really just trying to control the outcome of this thing. You're trying to think, okay, if I can anticipate every possible hurdle and every struggle, if I can create, you know, football field lengths of spreadsheets that, you know, tell me exactly what to do 
should this problem happen and I spend you know weeks months on this plan then you're 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 fooling yourselves you know there's there's the right amount you know I've been listening to a lot of what Alex Hormosi has to say lately and he's a big proponent of just do it you know just get out there do your thing you know keep it simple that actually you know marketing or selling your thing or yourself is pretty simple it's just stick to the basics you know and and he he talks about this in in his most recent book which i'll put a uh, affiliate link in the description here on hundred million dollar leads where he i mean i've never seen a book that basically gives you play-by-play -play tactics now i'm not trying to sell it but i want you to to check it out if you're even somewhat interested in one day you know doing your own thing or even let's say you're a marketer for a company and you want you know just simple straightforward tactics plays you know and he purposely talks about things on like a third grade level you know rather than most marketing books they're basically you know patting themselves on the back like listen to me and all my amazing buzzwords and terms that that only if you have a marketing degree or an MBA or something will you be able to understand um, now that doesn't mean there isn't still value there but a book like this 100 million leads and then his other book 100 million offers or something like that you know it's just plain plain simple and we can say I'm gonna do this thing and I know what to do and I'm gonna execute and so you're not gonna be able to control the outcomes of life you can plan all you want curveballs are gonna get thrown your way when it comes to a big decision or even take it at the project level you know you're working on this website design and you're trying to anticipate what you know mr or mrs client might be looking for and you've done your best to do your research ask them questions have them fill out a, a survey you know get that creative brief dialed but in the end they may not really be able to describe what it is they want and you're gonna have to learn how to roll with that and what it's what it takes is just putting something out there you put it out there so whether that's a design and you've basically taken your heart out of your your chest and said I don't care go ahead smash it <laughs> which isn't easy taking that criticism hoping that they like something because you poured your soul into it and this my friends is another point and why I would like to suggest the importance of like quick cuts and getting something out there quickly you know failing fast right and being communicating that up front just be like hey client you know it's okay if you don't like what I do and I'm gonna take a stab at it basically just to as a exercise of communication right like here it is tell me what you don't like about it great and a lot of times that takes the pressure off and they may like it better than they would have otherwise because it takes down these these walls of like well I've got to show that I'm getting the right amount of value out of this so if I don't push back enough make it hard on the person then you know I'm not gonna get my, my money's worth or whatever right but instead if they feel like they're a collaborator in the process man that's golden that's great and I've found that you know quick cuts yeah you you risk the chance that they're gonna be like what you call yourself a designer are you kidding me you you seriously want me to consider this <laughs> who who do you think you are but 
that is extremely rare, let me tell you. Because if you've been doing this for a little while, you know, and if you've kind of made it to a point where you know what's good design or what's not, or accept the fact that all of this stuff is just subjective, then you can communicate to a certain degree or, or uh, you know, lean on your experience from, from the past to help you here. But here I go, I'm on tangents, left and right, tangents. Let's get back to it, this, this idea of overthinking, right? I've tried to give some examples of like, when you don't overthink and you just do it, that things will start to fall into place. You know, that you can't steer a parked car, right? You've got to start moving forward in a direction so that you can get that practice of like, how do I steer around this obstacle? Or I didn't anticipate this, but I'm, you know, a logical human for the most part. Uh, what should I do here? Well, I'm going to... I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a decision. Keep moving forward. Was that the perfect decision? Maybe, maybe not. And then you'll find that even though you're making mistakes along the way, if you're progressing, if you have put that overthinking aside and you've given yourself permission to do rather than just pretend to do, then that, my friends, is where the magic happens. That is where we are able to prove through the doing. <laughs> and you can tell that, you know, I'm, I'm doing that right now. This is off the cuff. Sure, I had this recording that I wanted to dissect and talk about, but, you know, I'm not scripting every word up on the screen. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it through this, you know, like we're in this together. You're listening to this. You may be hoping that I stumble because you like that comic relief, or you may be hoping that, you know, like urging me on, like you can do it. Ike, <laughs> you and your stupid face can do it, right? There I go. Self-deprecating once again, but yeah, I can do it and I don't care what anyone else says, okay? Because I'm comfortable with myself. Yeah, there are things I want to improve. There are things that um, maybe I didn't think about enough. Like, was this the right camera angle or attire? Should I have cleaned up my background? If you're watching the video version, you know, all the things. But I digress. Now, the final point that I wanted to kind of call out here in what was said about overthinking and not being able to control the outcomes and accepting that is that you got to ask yourself, and this is maybe a, a way to gauge if you've thought through it enough. Do I know what to do? If so, just do it right? Trust the process. You know, a lot of times if you're looking to, now I use this as an example because I think it applies really well. And I think my audience, you all, you know, come and listen for, for this. You're thinking of breaking away from the corporate world and doing your own thing. For example, you want to be your own creative boss because as creatives uh, that is something that we struggle with it's hard to just you know dial it down and be all about process and only do one thing and and as a creative we're taking you know an ad for social or you know paid ads online digital and we're just swapping out the image and changing the title and using one of three templates time and time again. 
that's hard for us to do and it's not uh, exactly satisfying. So you're telling yourself in this example, I'm gonna go do my own thing. I'm gonna be creative. I'm gonna take a chance. I've been you know, working in the industry now for 15, 20 years. And that's, that's me as well as it might be you, right? Or you've been doing it for three years or five years. Whatever the, the case may be, I think the litmus test is you think to yourself like, okay, these companies or company that I've worked at, what do they do? You know, how do they uh, go and get new clients? How do they keep clients? You know, what are they doing to ensure that the work gets done you know and I'll tell you I've worked for three or four companies in the past you know 15 20 years design related businesses and my current employer uh, where I'm an in-house designer and then in my time consulting you know obviously worked with multiple different you know, big companies, smaller, medium-sized companies, and, and got to get a window into how they do things. But looking at the smallest design studio that I worked for and the biggest, you know, corporate fintech that I'm currently working for, it's all the same, you know? You've got your sales funnel. You're, you know, you're working people through it. You got your cold leads. You got your warm leads, you know. And again, this book that I called out from Alex Hormosi is uh, is amazing at, at just kind of dissecting this. So if this is the one hurdle that you have and you just need that extra confidence to kind of be like, you can do this, that, my friends, is your is your book. And so yeah, I look at I look at the smallest design firm I worked for and let's let's peel back the curtains a little bit you know there was uh, two partners and one of them spent majority of his time you know reaching out going making customer visits uh, responding to one ads at the time or whatever the you know the internet wasn't as mature as it is today and or, or just reaching out to local companies and saying, hey, we can do this better. Whatever it was, there was a certain amount of time spent in business development. And they, you know, have been in business for like 30 years now and they're keeping things moving, keeping the doors open by just doing that and, and keeping a relatively small team in business and that's great and then you know I look at the the next step up and it, and it actually was a step back at first you know when I left that company to go to my next company it was hey we're we're just two guys with a software development company and we're doing great by ourselves but our clients are looking for design help we've struggled finding a good fit with a design firm and and I was brought in to take what I'd learned from that first company and basically apply it to company number two and it started out slow and rough and and my initial charge was to just be able to pay for myself because their thing was paying for themselves just fine I had like six months to you know, where I could not pay for myself. And then after that, if I wasn't paying for myself, well, then we'd probably have to part ways. You know, I dug deep. I, lo I looked at, what, you know, what, what did that first design firm do? How did they create proposals when they had a potential customer on the line? You know, what did they do when they were face to face with the customer? How did they act? Whatever. And I applied it there. And we, we grew from three or four people to 30 people at the height of the company. And it was awesome. And, and the design side of things, 
were rocking and rolling and we were actually bringing in more work than the other side, which allowed them to kind of take their foot off the gas a little bit and create their own product, which was a dream of the two founders and solve a problem out there that they had identified through one of their uh, clients, long-term clients. And then, you know, I went to MX, my current place. And, you know, initially it was like drinking from a fire hose, but I was able to think, what are these things that I could do, like be responsive, be um, easy to work with, you know, create good work consistently and on time. And if I did that in this environment, how would it play out? And it was huge, you know. I, thankfully, not to toot my own horn, but received lots of praise and was able to go from one level to another very very quickly <laughs> not necessarily in title but in compensation which at the time was what i was looking for and so much appreciated but during my time at mx i'll just say it you know where i work most of you um you know in the fact it, it is a different type of business than you know professional services design business right but they still need to bring clients in they got to keep them happy they got to deliver you know the brand the visuals the level of professionalism is every bit if not more important for them than it is for a smaller like design firm or agency and just like having awesome designs help me as a designer and artist sell my work because it's an example of like that's what you're buying is the design and I'm all about design led right um, well surprise surprise and and you know not everyone might admit this and maybe and I'm definitely biased well, let's just put it that way um, those designs which are essentially just a form of communication, right? It's the ultimate form. You have to design the products so that they function well and communicate, in this case, your personal finances or your, if you're a bank, you know, how things are going, the metrics, opportunities to upsell, whatever. And then on the brand level, you know, your website, if that conveys professionalism and is easy to digest what's being said there and communicated, then guess what? You win. You're going to do well. You know, you put on a huge event and yeah, it's important that you have good content at the event. I mean, that's huge. But, and I think my non-creative boss would agree with me, that the experience is number one. And what goes into experience, right? It's the content, yeah. It's the creative. It's the atmosphere. It's, it's all designed. It's all designed, right? You know, creating content, figuring out when certain pieces of content should be presented through keynotes or whatever, uh, entertainment, you know, breakout for this, whatever. It's all orchestrated and designed. You know, what music is playing when? How do you get people into their seats? You know, well, we're going to dim the lights. We're going to turn up the music. We're going to have flashing visuals up on the screens, we're going to have a countdown, all the things, right? And then, surprise, surprise, people can feel like, hey, something, something's about to go down, I better find my seat, and I better stop talking. Or I can't talk because the music's too loud, right? <laughs> so, 
hugely grateful for what I've learned and I would uh, wager to guess that you've learned more than you realize in your experience, in your life's experience. You know, slice it up, dice it up, figure it out. You know, I love the, the quote by Steve Jobs where he talks about, you know, when you realize that the world we live in and the laws and the way things are, and I'm butchering the quote, and I've done this in the past, essentially were created by people that are no more intelligent than you, then you can change the world. And the people that are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the people that actually do. So how can you change your world? What can you do to step out into the unknown? And trust the process. Trust that you know what you need to do. And that all you have to do is do it. Right? And like Nike says, just do it. And that, my friends, is how you know when you've thought through something enough. And again, this is just one dude's thoughts on another dude's quote on another dude's TikTok channel, <laughs> right? So many dudes. And that isn't to say that you ladies aren't dudes. We're all dudes, dudettes, guys, whatever, right? Just know that we're all about everyone and you are more capable than you realize and you can do it. I know you can. So trust the process and don't kid yourself that by overthinking you're actually making real progress because after you've baked that idea you've done the right amount of thoughtful consideration of thinking and you'll know where, when that is because you'll ask yourself do I know what to do and if the answer is yes then just do it just go out and get you some of that, right? So, until next time, my friends, keep on creating. Create or die.